Croya facility. I'm Ed Johnson, the cable TV coordinator for Lake Forest, and I'm here with world-renowned artist and Lake Forest resident, Mark McMahon. Hi, Mark. How are you? Hi. How are you? Great. Nice and we're here for a special occasion today. We're here for the uh, unveiling of the mural here at Croya. Uh, I understand you, it only took you four days to make this mural, huh? Well, it took me four days to paint it up on the wall. And I worked with the kids for um, oh, about two weeks before, and we worked on how to draw and the process of drawing. And um, then I asked uh, whoever was interested to, to participate, and they did drawings, and then I did drawings of meetings that were taking place at Croya, all the different activities here. And then what we did is we, um, uh, put those drawings together uh, with my Xerox machine and started uh, piecing them together and then the, the kids helped with those ideas and I'd bring them in and leave them for a week and then the kids would look at them. And then another drawing would show up and we'd splice that in and stuff. And then uh, finally I got the okay from everybody to go and, and we started putting it up on the wall. We, uh, during that time I also was working on the sequencing of how that mural was going to go up on the wall. So I see many different areas of the mural here, Mark. We have some words up there on some shirts. Obviously, each section has, uh, has a significant meaning to it. Can you take me through this a little bit and show me what we have here? Well, we started by uh, laying in the uh, different colors of the schools. Deer Pass colors, uh, Lake Forest High School, the schools in Lake Bluff, and then the Academy is here, and then also Woodlands has their color up here. Oh, I see that and now. that's the colors that the kids use. And then the subject matter is the kids and their, um, we were going to do the activities in the area of, at the different schools, but when I got to Croy, I found out all the activities here were sort of interesting. And we really never ever left the building to do the drawings. And so what you see are the different activities that take place here. And the reason the kids have done drawings of themselves, and I did drawings of the kids, is because here is where these kids are growing up, and mm -hmm. it's, it's sort of... Uh, shows them that kind of a thing. Are you represented in there? Are you up there somewhere? I'm not. I didn't. I, yeah, sometimes <laughs> I'll stick myself into them, one of my murals. But <laughs> I didn't stick in. a no, no. It might be that guy there with that straight hair coming out. Oh, there you are. Okay. Yeah, sort of spooky <laughs> eyes. <laughs> I also noticed, I remember hearing that uh, the guy right there on the scooter is Chris Torrance, our own Chris Torrance. He was uh, scooting around in the middle of the circle, sort of organizing from his scooter. <laughs> So I thought that was nice. And the first drawing I did was the Fender drawing down at the end. And that was a boy who showed up for music lessons in the basement here. And I was just sort of interested because he sort of stayed off by himself. Hmm. And then he had this guitar and he was just sort of walking around for a couple minutes. And I saw him go over the elevator and went down and I just sort of followed him down the, uh, down the elevator. I said, where's that kid going with the guitar? And downstairs, the wonderful rooms where they have the lessons and things for music. Uh, mm -hmm. music and stuff is very nice. Before that, when I had the layout done, all of a sudden the speakers showed up on the wall before I got the drawing up there, which goes right over the guitar, which is perfect. Uh, it fitted out perfect. Sort of a nice mistake, which are what murals usually are. So they're big nice mistakes. mistakes. Yeah, nice <laughs> mistakes. And I remember vividly during that week when I came to visit you, I remember when you were painting that corner there, you were kind of stretched out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because the speaker got in the way, so I had to uh, put a ladder on and then hang out over the edge of it and stuff like that. So you got to be pretty flexible to be an artist as well, huh? Well, you better be. Yeah, yeah. No, these are physical, you know. You can't... Uh, when I do ceramic murals and stuff, mm -hmm. you'll handle each tile. I'll have, sometimes have murals with 2,400 tiles. Wow. And you will handle uh, each tile, I figured, once about 18 to 20 times before it goes on the wall. It's a health club. <laughs> you, you, you know, so. And when you're hanging off a scaffold and doing the painting, it, you have a little of that going on. So this is a huge, huge mural here. Um, how do you kind of break it down into sections so that, so that it, it can be manageable to someone like yourself? It's, it's a huge, big project, and you can probably get lost in it if you're right up there on the wall right next to it. How, do, how does that work? Well, what you do is, you first of all, you're doing sequencing. When you do a mural, you have to work in a sequence. And what I did is I did the drawing and it's a 40 foot, 40 feet to uh, seven and a half feet high. And when I went from that corner down to where it sort of breaks, that line right there breaks up perfectly. At that moment, I called John Shipman, the architect, and I said, hey, John, whoever measured this wall was right on the button. Because wow. on that seam, it breaks right on the foot. Bonus. Uh, yeah, it was really good, <laughs> which helped my design. Then what I did is I took the drawing and you break it down into inch. 
So you end up with a drawing that's 40. I remember seeing this 40 one. inches by uh, seven and a half inches high. And then you mark off each square. And then when the kids come and help draw it up on the wall, all they have to draw is a foot square. So it's an inch to a foot. And so they could just lay in a pencil line like that. And then the next sequence is when you uh, go in and, and then ink it up. I sort of inked it and would have some of the kids help, the ones that had more skill. I had some of them help. And what they did is um, uh, we would come in. And then when you do the final ink uh, uh, black line on the mural, uh, you want to hold that consistent. That's the, that line work is the consistency. And also, it's the part of my style. So there so, is a, a penciling stage, an inking stage, and a paint stage. Yeah, the is first right? drawings were done on location. And those drawings were done of the different kids. So this drawing right here, right there, is on that wall in the green section right there. Okay, I so that. it comes up that way, like that. And um, I don't have the kids' drawings here, but another drawing is um, this is um, the meeting with the uh, cart going on around it. This is a drawing done here, sitting over in the corner there. And then that is that section over there with the uh, student leader and uh, then the kids with the Illinois t-shirt. And what happens is then when you start to pull that together into this drawing, you lay that in and splice it into the different drawings. Then what happens there is this drawing right here is here. And then what you do when you put it up on the wall, then it takes its own style and what happens is the the mural then takes over its own, it, its own life. Did you play with the layout quite a bit to, oh, sure. to make sure that everything is working in Yeah, but factor? you play with the layout smaller. Mm -hmm. you, you work with it smaller so you can control the space, spacing of it. Mm -hmm. Then what you do is you know that you're going uh, to a 40 inch base. So you go 40 inches and then this is blown up at, uh, 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 one and a half times. So you have something to hang up on the scaffolding with and you can see it easily while you lay it in. But then what you do on the wall is you square off the wall a foot square pencil marks and then, um, uh, then go in and, and you fill in each block. And as you go, you check it off. So here we are looking at the rightmost uh, corner of the mural here. What's, uh, what's the scoop on this section? Well, when I first started drawing, I came and, and uh, what happens is the kids have this game that they play on the TV set where they do rock and roll. And on the screen up here, they, they do, um, uh, there's songs that come on with the uh, uh, sort of am animated uh, rock and rollers. And these guys have to follow the song and then at the end of it, they're scored on how they do with all their instruments and stuff. Well, when I first came in here, the whole room was facing the wall looking at this TV <laughs> screen playing this game. So I sat down in amongst them for about, I was in there doing a drawing for about 10, 15 minutes. And about 15 minutes later, one of the kids stopped and said, where'd you come from? <laughs> but, so they're so locked on this game. And then when you get this drawing was done very small. And when you blow it up, it gets real nice. And that's one of the students' drawings. Cool. And this is a student's drawing here, too, which is right there. But that takes on sort of an African look right there. Yeah, I see that. The more and more, the kids are not trained in drawing, so they're running on natural instincts to mm -hmm. uh, do drawings. So occasionally, I mean, they'll do 100 drawings, but occasionally they'll hit one of these. And that's, I mean, I've seen Picassos that aren't as nice as that <laughs> uh, when, when you put them together. And then you put them up on the wall, and they take over their own... Uh, style. Uh, it, it sort of takes over its own look because you do it and then because I just lay the lines down with my hands, mm -hmm. the, my drawing style comes out. That drawing there divides the whole mural in a section and that's very nice. That was done by one of the counselors here in three minutes, that drawing. But it was very simple and it comes down and then that squiggle in the hair, I mean that's all style. Uh, from her drawing and she was just joking around doing the drawing but it, it was perfect for a break in the mural. So over there in the corner I see this interesting shirt it says I wrote the note you got in trouble for passing and where does that come from Mark? <laughs> well that comes a uh, young gal who was standing there in the middle of all these kids playing 
uh, had that t-shirt on and so I oh. put that in mm -hmm. uh, just as in, um, uh, in here it says Lake Forest Dance Team. Mm -hmm. You got the Chicago Shamrocks up there. Here's a Cubs on this I can side. handle the Cubs, all right. And then on the back of this boy's t-shirt, it said, to be continued. That's very so cool. So you try and pick up those different things. It sort of gives you a time and place, and when oh. you're drawing it, you can draw it right over the line work, and it all seems to fit fine that way. One of the kids did the Croya drawing where all the people's names who have given money to Croya are, mm -hmm. and that's uh, the wall behind us over here. But in that drawing there, I. I laid it in, but by stylizing it, it gives it its own pattern. I think that a lot of kids realized that they could draw and didn't even think that they could. And they didn't realize that a drawing can come out in two minutes or however long Mark said to draw in. Um, I think people found like hidden talents and it was really cool. It was cool to watch people get excited about it and like become part of it even though they didn't want to or didn't think they could be. Kids all have is the ability to do this. It's all there, but what happens is when you start grading them and you start uh, uh, telling them that a tree is green and not purple and a thing like that, what happens is every time that kind of comment's made, a kid falls off the creative charts because they go, well, I must not be good at this. So then they get canceled. When you do a project like this, you all of a sudden are asking them to wake up different parts of their brain that haven't functioned before for a long time but they all had it from when they were little kids. And so what happens is they had just overcome themselves. And if you can get them to drop the shield down and go to work, which is what Croy is about, is dropping the shield and learning to socialize. Once you get them to try something new, they're stunned that they're able to just instinctively do this. I mean, they just do it. Kids do this, this is in them. And uh, uh, you're great painters and stuff like that as they paint longer and longer, they go back to childhood, like Calder and those guys, they all, their big thing is the, the more they can go back to childhood in their paintings, the more valuable the paintings become because it's natural instinct. I think when we're here Friday nights at the Student Union, it's so cool to see kids bring their friends over and be like, check this out, this is me, and hey, I know who that is, and whatever, it's just so cool for them to see themselves in the mural. Well, what will be interesting is how long the mural will be a focus until it goes into the background. Mm -hmm. And it will go into the background, but it, it's curious to see how long that'll take mm -hmm. for it to do. I, that I sort of am always interested in is when it sort of goes to the background. Like the one at the high school, right. when I heard they were uh, going to take down uh, sections of the high school to build a new section, I called over and said, you're not going through that mural, are you, and stuff, because architects sometimes only see the wall in their drawings, and then they put the plan in, and then some guy, you know, smoking a cigar comes up and knocks the wall down. Well, they won't ever replace the mural and stuff. And that's what's nice about this one is it's up off the ground. Mm -hmm. And it'll be interesting to see how long it is before the kids, it just becomes the, in the fabric of the room. And Anybody who walks in this building and spends the quality time that you did with the students, you made it so easy for them and you made it so easy for us. It was such a great experience beyond just creating something that's going to be here for the rest of the history of this building at least. Mm -hmm. It's the memories that you created and the ways that you went about in such a gracious way with the kids. You did not turn anyone down. You let everyone yeah, climb but, up there. and But kids are easy, you know. Well, you I mean, say they're easy. that. Yeah, but, yeah, they're easy. Yeah. I know all of us really appreciated how, how, uh, you know, how easy you made it for all of us and, and how exciting and, and what a great experience to go from something of sketches and books and having kids just, you know, what, what did yours take, Caroline? What did you say, 30 seconds practically? No, two minutes, two I think. Minutes. She had two minutes, but just spewed that drawing right out. It might have, you might have peaked right at that moment. <laughs> Because it's really a nice section. It breaks up the whole mural real nice right there. So. <laughs> um, my favorite part is when the video is put all together and you can see all the chaos that you worked around, all mm -hmm. the kids like in and out, and you just like were fueled by it, you know? Well, it, there, you do get energy off it, but at the same time, when you're raising a family of nine, that's not an unusual activity. Yeah. That was going on all the time of my life. Now I think of myself somewhat of an electronic artist, if you will. You know, there's and there's a process to creating a video or, or a movie that we that we do over at LFTV. 
It was interesting to me that you mentioned that works of art are also, it's a process or a sequence. So is there a lot of uh, math involved in this sequence that you talk about? Or what would you say is, uh, is the main component? Uh, you have proportions that you work with automatically. Mm -hmm. But it's the, same, um, when you, it's the same processes as making a film or the same processes of making a sculpture or uh, you know, putting them through the foundry situation. There's steps that have to be followed. It's the same as any business deal, same as building a house, same as doing anything. There's sequences that have to be followed. And then when you do a watercolor painting or you do a thing. Now, all the time, I am breaking rules in the process of making art. But that's sort of controlled mistakes. And when you have a whole series of a 1,000 controlled mistakes, you end up with a mural or you end up with a, a watercolor painting. or you, It's, it's sort of, um, it, then it turns into instincts. What you might call mathematical, I call sort of instinct because I don't sit around and, and figure it out uh, mathematically or anything like that. But the sequences run the same as filling, doing a math problem, I'm sure. You know, it's funny that you mentioned uh, instinct is because I'm out there in, um, I was in Vegas two months ago with my brother. No, and that's I, I bad instinct. Well, that's, that's bad instincts too. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's one thing. But I, I gave him my camera for, to, to take a picture of me. And he took a picture and there I am at the bottom of the frame and there's all this you know, and, and it's my instinct when I'm behind that camera there, you know, to, to do certain processes when it comes to uh, videotaping something. And it's amazing that you say that. Well, you have because you too. understand composition, mm -hmm. you also understand um, a storytelling, uh, which you take for granted. Apparently, most people do not. So when you work with the kids here on the mural, those instincts are not in those kids, so you right. have to wake up those instincts. Gotta mold those instincts. But when they come alive, you can tell because they get excited. Fascinating uh, talking with you uh, about this process here, Mark. And I was uh, very elated when I found out that uh, the na your name, Mark McMahon, was actually something that I've been looking at for the last uh, year and a half since I started working here at the City of Lake Forest. Little did I know that um, there at my LFTV offices were your, uh, some of your uh, pictures over there on the walls. You had some Lake, Lake Forest Day pictures and uh, some pictures yeah. of, uh, I think, the 4th of July, winter, winter time in Lake Bluff. Mm -hmm. What's the story about those pictures? Uh, McDonald's out on uh, Waukegan Road has my mural on oh. Lake Forest, which is a, a big thing. Well, I've been hanging around here a long time, so mm -hmm. you end up doing subjects that are in your area. Like the city sticker this year will be my drawing of uh, Market Square. Let's reach outside of Lake Forest for a little while. When I, before I came to Lake Forest, I, I recognized the style, your characters, and, and your style of, of the way you draw people. I recognize your style. So where have I seen your work before? Well, my work you'll see when you go down to um, uh, NASA Space Center. You'll see my drawings of the first launch of the space shuttle. Uh, I did the Indy 500 for Sports Illustrated when I was first starting out. Uh, I used to do uh, Virginia Slim's tennis tournaments for CBS television, things like that. Uh, you'll see my murals at O'Hare Airport, and you can also see them uh, on Van Buren and Federal in the South Loop for General Parking Corporation. Uh, this last year, I just finished a series for the TTX train company. Um, and which now is, uh, they've redesigned the whole lobby around the series of paintings I've done all over the country for them. And then um, I just did a commission in Paris of the Moulin Rouge. And then um, also I did Rome and, and Venice at the same time. And then I also did a series at the Chart Cathedral. And in the spring I was in Ireland doing a series uh, there in Ireland uh, and have sold some of those paintings through. I have about 45 galleries that carry my work. Bigsby and Crothers, uh, Gene and Joe Silverberg gave me a call and asked me if I'd do the traders on the floor of the Board of Trade. Uh -huh. And on the trading floor in my mural that I did on the Kennedy, which is 300 feet by 30 feet high, um, I put the trading numbers on there. And uh, I, in one section, I drew myself in on the floor of the trading <laughs> floor. And they didn't like that. And when they, they got up, they all were looking like, 
who's that guy? He wasn't in our <laughs> list. I said, well, that's me. <laughs> and they weren't really pleased and stuff. And what I did is I liked the ties all the traders have. Uh -huh. And uh, Bigsby and Crothers always sold those guys their ties and stuff. They were nice ties. And so uh, that was the mural, what the mural was about. But the traders, a lot of the traders that were on the wall come from town here. Oh, uh, well, okay. And stuff. They're different guys that I've known for a long time. Mm -hmm. And so. How did that process go? You weren't up there on a scaffolding, were you? No, what you do there is you do a painting, and then when you do the painting, uh, you do it to a proportion similar to what we've done here. Mm -hmm. And then a crew goes up there, five or six guys, and they paint that right up there. The sign painters go right up and they paint it right up. But you go up and you'll discuss uh, line quality with them a little bit and stuff mm -hmm. like that. But then they uh, put that up. And, and how, so, how long was the uh, mural up there on the wall? Well, it was up, you know, who knocked me off the wall was uh, Sammy Sosa and Mark McGuire when they started the home run derby. Oh. Uh, they knocked me off the wall by the end of the summer <laughs> and stuff. And the, um, they would change the numbers, uh, Sammy Sosa's mm -hmm. home runs well, and was, Mark McGuire's home runs. That was a big deal back <laughs> that then. That was the end of my mural on the wall. And did you drive past it a bunch of times and just kind of like, wow, wow, that's mine. Right well, here. we're going with the girls, um, the basketball team from St. Mary's. Uh -huh. We were going down to a basketball game on a bus. <laughs> and the whole team was pinned against the window looking as, as the bus is drove by. slanting over yeah. to one side. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So every day I'd go down. You'd see it when you drove down every day. That's great. So. Now this has to be a gratifying career for you. I mean, I'm, I'm becoming a fan of yours t talking to you here now. Have, have, you, um, have you met a lot of famous folks? And has, has that part of it been interesting or exciting for you? Well, you meet people as you're outdrawn and stuff. Uh, one, one of the ones I really like, I just... Um, I was in Jacksonville, Florida this summer uh, doing a drawing and, and at the end of the, I'd been there three days doing it for TTX train company and I was staying in a hotel and I was in Florida so I thought, gosh, I'll go for a swim in the pool here at the end of the day after I'd done my drawings. Why not? So I'm in the pool and the other guy in the pool is an older guy and it was Hal Holbrook. Met Hal Holbrook about 30 years ago when I was doing The Awakening Land at the same time I met. Uh, had lunch with Jane Seymour and uh, mm. um, Elizabeth Montgomery. But Hal Holbrook always interests me because he always stood off and they, I did a drawing of him. And, and in the pool, when I saw him in Florida, I said, you know, I did a drawing of you years ago <laughs> and stuff. And um, uh, in Salem when, and stuff. And he said, you know, when I was in Salem, we almost burnt down the Rutledge Tavern. <laughs> and, and Rutledge was... Um, uh, Abraham Lincoln's first love. And the Rutledge Tavern was her family tavern. Wow. Well, my daughter, Meryl, just married uh, Ainsley Rutledge, who is an offspring of Anne Rutledge's. So I told Hal Holbrook the whole story <laughs> about it. It was more information than ever he, he wanted to know. But then a month later, I'm listening to the radio, and he just got nominated for his first Oscar wow. in the um, uh, Texas thing. So I've always sort of watched Hal Holbrook's career uh, uh, all the time. But that's just, you're sort of, inter you, you're crossing paths with people all the yeah, time. Yeah, definitely. And stuff. And I'm just glad to add you to my six degrees so that I can include <laughs> all these folks to the six degrees of me. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, you're not the, uh, the only artist in your family. It runs in the family. You, you, have, you come from good genes, is that right? Well, I don't know, blue jeans maybe. Yeah, we're all artists and, uh, you know, we need lawyers and bankers. And <laughs> now, my daughter's a banker down at Highland Park Bank, but uh, no, um, I come from a family of artists mm -hmm. and uh, everybody uh, participates at different levels. Uh, your website is mcmahonartgallery.com? Yeah, that is. That's if, they, if, they, if folks want to see your work uh, on the internet, they can check out some of your... Uh, well, they portfolio can, there? Yeah, they can see the uh, murals. Um, most of the murals I've done are on that website. And um, they can also see my Jacle print lines, and they can see originals, and they can also see um, my public, um, uh, public art pieces, but then also a lot of articles that have been written about the processes of doing the different uh, paintings and stuff over the years. And then the different articles I've done, like the University of Chicago, I went to Ireland mm -hmm. for them. And, those articles are all uh, on that site also. Okay. And then the, the resume that everybody tells me is a little long-winded. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so I don't know, yeah. So. Well, Mark, it's been great talking with you today. Great working with you a few weeks ago on the mural. Uh, very interesting, and I, I 
appreciate it. I know that Croy appreciates it too. Thank you very much. Yeah, well, it was fun. It was really fun. That, that's what it's all about, right? Yeah, yeah, it's that's fun. right. That's yeah. what it is. Uh, this is a uh, the original Xerox uh, that we built uh, in when we made the uh, a mural, and we've mounted it down. And then these are the colors that the colors are made from, from the school colors. And then each person who signs this will be a person who participated in the mural. So and you have participated in this by making this. Uh, I'm honored to have, uh, to have been a part of it. And uh, it's, it's great that we are able to contribute to this, that it's going to be here for, for the duration of this building. It's, it's great to be a part of it.